time for the Freelance Report, brought to you by Maximus Health and Fitness, 130 East Main Street, Riverhead, and by Michelangelo's of Matatuck in the Matatuck Plaza Shopping Center, Route 25 in Matatuck. Good morning, Gianna Volpe. Good morning, Bruce. I am so excited. This is our best show yet, the 15th show, and I promised that every five shows I would try to bring an East End music scene update uh, to the show. So this morning we have Mick Hargreaves of Lantern Recording Rig. Uh, Mick, who has a, an awesome farm in, in Manorville, um, is the mixer and the, the, the sound engineer for the One Guitar Project. Uh, this is Dan Rayburn. This is the first track on the first CD. Is that correct? It's called the American. I work every day of the week, but I still can't pay my bills. Maybe I've grown weak from running up, running up that same old hill. This ain't the life that I dreamed of when I was a child. American dreams have been shattered since the West was wild. Since the West was wild. Very resonant uh, idea, <laughs> especially now um, in America and uh, out here on the East End. Um, and sometimes it can be difficult making your way. Um, so, Mick, please tell me, uh, what was it like working on this project and how did you get involved in it? Well, it happened when uh, Don Bracken, the producer and sort of the idea guy, ringleader guy uh, of, of a songwriter circle out here, he came to me and he said, I have this idea i've got a 1961 gibson acoustic j45 guitar and i want a whole bunch of people to record using this guitar on the same day oh, oh my gosh i didn't know that it was it was all, it was all on a, one day it was all done in the same day in our redeemer lutheran church in right, uh, right. In Abiquag. Uh, Aquabog. Aquabog. See? I like it. I like Abiquag. Can you and he did from, radio in can, Congress, Abiqu right? Abiquag I mean, is on the south I know. Can you tell him from Miller Place? <laughs> so, um, oh, I thought it was Manorville. So, well, that's where the Lantern Sound recording is now, oh. over in Manorville. Oh. So, he came to me that, with that idea, and I was like, wow, this idea is so different that I, can't, I have to do this. Right. Because it's, there's much more to this than meets the eye initially. And of course that wound up being true. And it always comes down to a great idea. You know, right. there's a great idea, then everything else seems to kind of want to fall in line. So we, uh, I believe it was a Saturday, the last Saturday in December, we went over to the church and we recorded people from about nine in the morning till about 10 at night. Wow. Yeah. And everyone got 20 minutes each. And we recorded a, a two songs by everybody, just uh -huh. as an insurance policy. And some people took multiple takes, and, you know, we accommodated everything. And it's just, it's wound up to be so much more than I anticipated. Right. Now, but the interesting thing with this project is that it, it bened, correct me if I'm wrong, it uh, benefits charity. Maureen Specifically, that's Maureen's the, that's Haven. That's the central thing. It's um, uh, Maureen's Haven. Right. The homeless shelter outreach program, which is like, hey, fine, you know, that's like, fine. I love, I love when there's a great charity involved. It it just elevates everything to a whole different uh, spiritual level. Right. And we were talking about, you know, uh, bringing it back to uh, the track we opened with by Dan Rayburn about uh, the difficulty sometimes in making it, especially uh, out here, how expensive it is. Um, the need to support our homeless population is even more important um great point yeah and so tell me we uh, now we've got the release concert at the vale levitt on may 21st it's a thursday right yeah. and the price of the ticket includes the two disc set yep um tell me a little bit about uh, now this partnership with les paul's son is what's what's going on with that well whenever you make a record right you're recording and you're tracking and then you're done recording and then you mix it and then the mixes are done and they have to be mastered. I kind of liken it to um, you're making a puppet, right? And you have all the parts of the puppet, the arms, the head and everything. 
And then the mastering guy puts the, all the limbs and ah, the head on the body and so makes sure everything is lined up right and it's a unified piece of work. So that's what the mastering guy does. And um, it was Don's idea to go to an outfit called G&J Audio in northern Jersey, mm -hmm. which, as it turns out, is uh, run by two guys who used to work in the Atlantic Records recording studio in New York. And boy, do they have stories. Um, and so that is uh, Joel Kerr, K-E-R-R, -R, and his partner is Gene Paul, son of Les Paul. Unbelievable. And so, and so did they approach you guys? How did, how did no, it No, no. Uh, I contacted them. I said, hey, this is what we're doing, and we're going to need it mastered, and it's going to be two CDs long. And they were like, wow, this is, we've never seen anything like this. So they We would love to, you know do this so they did and and you know they're they've been around the block before these two guys as far as right. mastering things and they have these silvery statues the on the shelf called grammys and this and right, that so right is this the first time that this is being reported about? um i guess so yeah we haven't really you know we've been so busy working on this thing getting it done right that the out you know the, the going to uh, taking it to the streets so to speak uh, is beginning kind of here at WRIV. Well, Let me well, ask you Don this. Don was bit. here last week, right? Right. Well, you, Don was you here mentioned, at, but you Les mentioned Paul. a really interesting name, Les Paul, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there any truth to the legend, to the legend that Les Paul invented the electric guitar by using a stylus from a turn from a from a record player in the nineteen late nineteen thirties and inserting it into the into the body of the guitar? Is that yeah? Any? I think that's true. I think first though he tried to stretch some wires across a piece of old railroad track or something and, and <laughs> I guess that didn't go well but you know as with all inventors right there's there's trial and error and usually a lot of error right. he got zapped yeah. pretty good at one point according to uh, yeah you know, I mean you know shocked yeah oh yeah pretty I'm good sure he's been yeah I'm sure he can handle he could handle some voltage right in right. his day and they also and and this is and and Gianna I don't think you've you've, you've heard this one um but he also used to get together with a group of musicians in his apartment in the city and and you actually put say. a pirate radio station <laughs> on the air and they did radio you know concert shows I love it on this pirate radio station in the 1930s yeah, I love it um, also as far as um, he also had a recording studio in his house yeah at microphone in, fact, in the kitchen yeah, yeah. so the yeah. so that Mary Ford could sing while he was playing at the car and what doing the dishes and sing while he was recording like the guitar tracks in the basement. Yeah. No, I I've I've I refer to his ideas and methods often because I too think that a recording studio isn't necessarily always the best place to make a record. And well, like with one guitar, we went to a church. Right. And right. we used that room sound. On the record you can hear, you know, it was done in December, so in the in the course of the day you have the the roof of the building heating up, right, right. and you have the roof of the building later on he cooling down, and so that roof makes noise. Mm -hmm. So we had to a work around that, and b just kind of chalk it up to okay, there's going to be some room and building mojo right. on this record Which here. Which I kind of love. And if you, we worked around that, and we're fairly successful in subduing that, but if you listen closely, you can hear there's a some bit of roof it. creaking. On this record, here and there, right? Which but that's, I love. you know, that's you evident. Know? We didn't pull any trickery with this. Which and Les Paul, cool. interestingly enough, you know, when he recorded like "How High the Moon," which was their biggest oh, hit, th it's great. You know, it was recorded. I think it was in his apartment, in a, in his garage, in, his, in, in, his in garage. Jamaica, the one in Queens. Um, and as a matter of fact, he used it was recorded on a turntable on 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 um, direct to acetate or lacquer. Yeah, lacquer, right yeah. on lacquer, and and his turntable was the flywheel from a Cadillac because he felt yes. that a Cadillac was a precision automobile <laughs> and therefore the flywheel would be, would be precision, would be a precision instrument which would be totally balanced. Yes, and, and which goes back to my theory that, like this one guitar thing, the best ideas are often the most harebrained ideas. Oh, yeah. Right? If, I, get, if I hear a crazy idea, <laughs> I'm going to more often than not say yes to it. Just because nice. you know, let's get out of let's get out of this box that we're stuck so, in thinking. And and the nice thing about the the Les Paul connection is that his son Gene Paul 
was the drummer with Les Paul and Mary Ford for a long time. I had no idea. And now he's had a hand in, in mastering this oh, record. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, and so where can we, where can we get tickets uh, for the release party on the 21st, the concert? Don is supposed to hear, be here to tell you that. Okay. But the, on, on Facebook, number one, uh, there's a One Guitar Facebook group uh, a gr uh, page. Um, you can, I'll, you know what, I'll make sure that there's info uh, at MickHargraves.com, too. Okay. When I get home, I'll put that yeah, up and, and front Mick, and center. You know, uh, this summer, I know that you are hosting a concert series at the farm. Yeah, we're doing house concerts at the farm. Right, and that, so tell me a little bit about about those and uh, those kick off. Well, it's yeah. interesting. We kick off this Saturday night, uh, coincidentally, with... Um, <laughs> Uh, Brian Gallo, who's, who's made a record with me, right? And, and this see. guy named Rob U Europe that you may have heard oh, of, that Joker, and he's also on the one guitar. Both of these guys are on one guitar. Um, so we're doing a monthly house concert series at uh, the farmhouse where I have my recording facility, and it's unique because it's it's going to be one of the few house concerts that's actually recorded and videotaped live. Oh, very cool! So for later web streaming. So nice. people who come to these house concerts will actually uh, be attending a recording session, which is awesome. Really um, I would definitely yeah. love. I, I just I'm I'm setting up Rob's website on Squarespace, and so I'd love to post post that oh, yeah, up yeah. on there. No so problem. I've got the party guest here by Brian Gallo, um, and Rob will be opening for Joan Osborne at the Suffolk Theater on Saturday night. Uh, fr Friday. No, tomorrow night. Yes, tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night. Um, and then our actually our next guest after the break will be Steph Paynes from Les Zeppelin, who is playing there next Friday night. Um, who I'm very excited to have on. Uh, oh, I, you know what? I, I do have tip now. It's on the tip of my tongue. You can go to BrownPaperTickets.com. Excellent. And so it's search for do a search for one guitar. It'll come up, and that's Thursday, May 21st at the Vale Levitt Theater, which I can't think of a better place. Right. Because there's a lot of, you know, mojo and, and vibe in that and place, of history. course. Yeah. Right. And yeah. uh, what time does the concert start? I believe it's an 8 o'clock start. Well, Mick, it was an absolute pleasure having you on today. Um, Thank you. We will have you back. And, and just a little back. tidbit, if you, miss the sh if you can't attend the show at the Vale Levitt Theater, but you're still hanging around Riverhead... Word has it there's going to be an after-party gathering Ooh. over at Vines and Hops. All right. So I wanted to mention that. Very cool. When we get back from the break, we will have Steph Paines from Les Zeppelin. Take a trip to Italy without ever leaving the North Fork at Michelangelo's in Madison. at the Mattituck Plaza Shopping Center on Route 25 in Mattituck. Back on the Freelance Report brought to you by Maximus Health and Fitness, 130 East Main Street, Riverhead. And by Michelangelo's of Matatuck, Matatuck Shopping Plaza, Route 25 in Matatuck, Gianna Volpe, and, uh, and her guest, who, by the way, live wire. I am so excited. Just in 30 seconds with talking with her on the phone, live wire. I love it. I love it. I met uh, Steph last year at Tweeds um, and, you know, learned of her band, Les Zeppelin, who will be uh, headlining next Friday at the Suffolk Theater. Um, and, you know, world-class, it takes a world-class musician to, to be playing uh, Jimmy Page. Um, but I, I didn't know just how big they were until I was looking up uh, more information about them this morning. Uh, Steph, it is such an honor to have you on the show. Please tell me, you've been there uh, from the beginning. You know, you got the, Les Zeppelin's been around for more than 10 years now, correct? 
I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, I'm it, having a little trouble oh, hearing you. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> all right. all those Marshall amps. <laughs> so um, I was just saying, you know, how, how long the band has been around. Oh, um, yeah. And you've been there, I mean, from the beginning, is that right? Yeah, it was, uh, I, I guess you might say it was my crazy idea. So I started the band, and uh, as they say, the guitarist remains the same. I've just been the one carrying the torch, but um, we... We came into being in about 2004, I want to say. Right. And, which, you know, yeah, it, just so a year later. Time, about 11 years ago. That's unbelievable. And I know, um, it, it, which Wikipedia, not um, uh, traditionally the tool of, a good tool of the journalist, but it's a good tool if you are checking that information. Um, so... I was looking this morning, it said that Chuck Klosterman, who, um, Spin Magazine uh, writer, actually wrote, has written, I think, like eight books. He did uh, Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs, which I read in 2005. Uh -huh. um, he was, you know, s uh, talking about what an acclaimed and incredible uh, band you, you guys are. And that's, you know, that was 10 years ago. So uh, w where did you get this crazy idea? How did you decide you know, to form an all-girl Led Zeppelin band? I don't know. I think I was hexed by Jimmy or something. <laughs> it's been a dream one night. No, but seriously. I, I mean, I think that it really was, um, you know, it sounds very naive and, and not very romantic, but I just, I just really was into the music, and I uh, was listening to a lot of it, for some reason, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of gotten that box set. I think it came out in the early 2000s, or I don't remember exactly when, but there was, the, you know, now, of course, they're remastering everything again, but right. there was this entire remastered box set that came out, and I had been listening to it and becoming more enthralled with it. And at some point, I think I was between gigs, I just thought, what an beautiful, self-indulgent, fun thing it would be to just play this music. And then, as I sometimes am wont to do, I just decided to actually go ahead and indulge my fantasy. <laughs> and well, so I started, to, so I just said, I'm going to go find some girls and play this music for fun, you know. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. But prior to Joan Jett's emergence in, like, 1980, there weren't that many women rock and rollers with right. the guitar. No. So, um... Uh, and does it that takes... Make it, does, does that... And, and, and now you have, what, Melissa Etheridge? And there are a few. Oh, I love Melissa But Etheridge. not a whole lot. Does that make it harder for a band like yours to get to get booked into places? Well, that's, it's an, it, that's a big and interesting question. I mean, first of all, you know... There aren't a lot of role model women guitar players or really rock musicians in general um, of of the kind of playing that we're talking about with a band like Led Zeppelin, right? right. I mean, certainly it, that kind of you know, I mean, that kind of prodigious playing is uh, has always been sort of a male realm, you know. So to be to find women at all and to want to do it at all, both of those things are unique, <laughs> okay, to begin with. But then if you take the band on top of that and you've got this conglomerate of girls playing at this level, what, what we experienced early on and which we still experience to a certain extent, although now the band is known a lot more, of course, right. is a kind of skepticism from both those people that would book the group, you know, and the audience in general, which is basically a women playing this music, really? Ha ha. But that, it's, that, it's, that yeah, somehow, like, novel. it's, but it's somehow I don't see, I don't see, a fun joke, a fun idea, but they're not really going to play. I, somehow I don't see you jumping over, you know, over, over an instrument the way, say, David Lee Roth does. Ah. David Lee Roth is not a guitar player. Well, oh, I understand he's just a singer, and he was but also that's a worse clown act. EMS, I mean, I, you, you wouldn't see Led Zeppelin doing it either. Amen. 
And it, I what, mean, what, they, they didn't jump around with their... I mean, we actually move around a lot on stage with our instruments, much more than most bands. Really? Well, oh, yeah. And, and, and that's hard, but that's years and years of, of practice and being really comfortable with your instrument. I mean, if, you're real, if your instrument is part of your body, that's a very advanced Amen. stage of playing. And, and not many people get, to, you know, that whole thing where your instrument might as well just be attached to you. It's just another, well, it's not even separate. And that much. makes me think of, um, you know, Jimi Hendrix. I was watching a documentary about him last night, and they were talking about how Jimi was very rarely without a guitar. You know, he strapped on a guitar before that's he, exactly he right. left the bedroom. Yeah, that's a perfect example. And, you know, a, a great segue here is the fact that you guys recorded your debut album at Electric Lady. Is that correct? We did. And how unbelievable. And, um, you know, Eddie Kramer. Yeah. Please tell Jimmy, me about what... Jimmy. <laughs> please, please tell me about what that experience was like for you as a musician. Well, that was just, you know... <laughs> it, it, it was amazing, sort of, that that happened, because that, that was another example of just a fantasy become real. I mean, it was, you know, I used to joke with the girls in the band early on, oh yeah, we'll have Eddie Kramer come and produce our <laughs> record or something. I mean, it was really this joke. But really... And so when we, when we decided to actually set off and make the first record, uh, the band was getting very big at that point, and uh, we had a lot of different producers who were interested in revisiting the Led Zeppelin catalog, you know, with a band like us. And... Um, I just said, before we picked them, I said, we should just go ask Eddie Kramer what the hell, you know, it'll be, just because it had always been this fantasy. And lo right. and behold, the next thing I know is I'm on the phone, the phone rings and it's Eddie Kramer saying, oh, hello. That's well, unbelievable. You girls are just, you know, you're really fantastic. I, I'd be interested in doing the record. And so, <laughs> so we did. But that, but it just to sort of add to the story which which you know the question you asked i mean there was a moment i think i'm not i don't think it was at electric lady because we did our basic tracks there and then we and then you went to pie is or yeah we went to, well that was a different record okay but we then went to some other studios to do overdubs and we were at this one studio in uh, new york city which had a lot of vintage gear and i was using it to do a lot of the guitar solos and i think it was a couple of days where it was all the guitar solos we were working on. It was mostly just me and Eddie and Lone in the studio. Let me ask you one one last question, at least for me, because we're going to have to wrap this okay. up. Um, you mentioned, you know, you did it in Electric Lady Studios, of course, that's the throwback to Jimi Hendrix and the and, album Electric and, Lady Land. And, and, and Led Zeppelin. Yeah, Led Zeppelin recorded there, too. Who had the album Electric Ladyland? Just, well, just, Jimmy, just since, okay. since I'm older than both of you, Jimmy's, I have the it was, album. It was Jimmy's studio. Since, since I have the album. All right, all right. Um, no, but it's all kidding aside. Um, does he still like the gold standard by which rock and roll guitar players are measured? Well, it depends on who you ask. Some people would say Jimmy Page, or some uh. people would say Eric Clapton or Jeff Beck. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jimi Hendrix was a unique player. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I think that he was... It, it, he was sort of in a realm by himself. Right. And, and, I, and I, if I had to narrow it down to one guy, <laughs> which is sort of an awful thing to do because he's so different than someone like Jimmy Page, for mm. example, completely right. different. But I, Hendrix played in a, in a, in a kind of dreamlike manner. He, he really was just on another, as everyone says, another planet with his playing. Someone like Jimmy Page is, much more disciplined in a certain way oh. when he plays not thoroughly because he also is an extremely emotional player but um you know i think i think hendrix had this kind of otherworldly spark which is sort of which sort of reminds me of you just in the in the way that you have made your your dreams become reality well miss pains it was an absolute honor and a pleasure to have you on uh the next friday night at the suffolk theater um les zeppelin will be playing um an inspiration to young women everywhere uh, and, and men you should come yes. oh i'll be <laughs> Both there of you but yeah it'll be a great show so next friday at the suffolk and we hope to see you be thank you pleasure. so much all right and when we come back from the break we'll put a bow on this 
Maximus Health and Fitness of Riverhead is 25,000 square feet of everything you need to create a new you. Maximus Health and Fitness, 130 East Main Street, has state-of-the-art exercise equipment, free weights, professional personal trainers, and private workout areas. They're next to the Suffolk Theater in the heart of historic downtown Riverhead. Use their child facilities, tanning stations, a hair salon, and smoothie bar with your membership at Maximus. Your membership also includes a full calendar of fitness classes like cross-training, weight training, boot camp, Zumba, spin, yoga, Pilates, and a lot more. Start a new, healthier lifestyle that you can stick with all year long. Join Maximus Health and Fitness, 130 East Main Street in Riverhead. Call 369-6293. 369-6293. Check their website at MaximusRiverhead.com or come on in to Maximus Fitness today. Maximus Health and Fitness, being healthy and getting in shape has never been easier. Well, that pretty much does it for this edition of the Freelance Report, brought to you by Maximus Health and Fitness, 130 East Main Street, Riverhead, and Michelangelo's of Manitouk, Main Road, Manitouk, in the Manitouk Plaza Shopping Center. Yes, and speaking of which, a quick plug for Matatuck Cinemas in the Matatuck uh, Plaza Shopping Center. A, a young lady picked up my wallet. I was seeing a movie there on Tuesday, and it was returned to me with the cash inside, which almost never happens. So thank you very much for that. Um, we'll see you back here again next week. And thank you very much to Mick Hargreaves of Lantern Recording Rig and Steph Paines of Les Zeppelin.